All right, hopefully yeah. this is picking up. We had to relocate this evening, but we'll make do. That's kind of how we do things. The, the luxury <laughs> digs. It's good stuff. Yeah. Hopefully you had a good Thanksgiving. And all is well. You're doing your shopping and whatever stuff like that people do. I don't know. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm Jared, by the way. <laughs> I'm Josh. Good to be here on this post-Thanksgiving Sunday. And uh, man, what what's all gone down since the last time we got together? We had the Survivor Series. We did have this the series of the Survivors that I don't think was ter as terrible as everybody else is making it out to be. Um, I did not see it, but I I take the words man the, the man's word for it. I um. Uh, a couple of things that a couple of reviews that I did listen to were pretty cool with the show. It was just the last match, the but main I, event was I, the problem. Uh, yeah, but, you know we've had that discussion for many many years of our mm -hmm. friendship, man. Uh, if the ending ruins stuff for you, that's I don't know. That's that's not a that's not an everybody problem. Yeah. The third movie in the trilogy is usually crap. The mm -hmm. rest of them can be pretty doggone good. So yeah. I mean, if the rest of the show was cool and. That's yeah. awesome. and I mean, the idea of yeah. Triple H booking himself into an ego fest ruining your show, man, you must not have been around very long. <laughs> Where you I, been, I, I love the guy. I love Triple H. But, man, you hear what happened to that, and it's like, yeah, oh, my so God. But this next uh, four <laughs> WrestleMania. Four angles like, for wow. real, man. That's, well, that's, it was just too much at one time. You're like, okay, you're booking yourself into a match with Shane McMahon, Braun Strowman, Kurt Angle, and for all practical purposes, Jason Jordan. Fantastic. Which, uh, I think a match with Triple H and Jason Jordan over Kurt Angle makes a lot more sense. Uh, nope. We're talking about the time of year, and you just got to be careful what you wish for because you might get it. No, it's Christmas. It's Christmas time. <laughs> uh, you know, a match with Triple H and Kurt Angle. Like, why does anybody want to see that? First of all, it's already been done. Second of all, uh, I just don't think you want to see a match with Kurt Angle on anybody. I agree. Love, love Kurt Angle as I do. We're both huge Angle marks, man, but yeah. I just completely agree. I'm like, man, I just don't think I want to see that. What is wrong with going back and watching the old footage of, you know, Kurt Angle when he was the baddest dude on the planet? I yeah. mean, he was just so good and so much fun. I don't need to. Mm -hmm. I don't need Kurt to wrestle until I'm sorry I'm still seeing him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. I just I don't know if that's such a good idea, but I totally agree that Triple H and Jordan on behalf of Angle that would work a lot better. Yeah. You get a lot more. I mean, you know, I guess it's that thing that you and I've talked about before, man. Where I'm not feeling Jason Jordan, but if you're gonna Ooh. do it, at least try to come up with something interesting. And they seem bent on doing it's, it. So yeah, it just feels like it's one of those deals where it's, it it does not matter whether it's going to work or not. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether it's It doesn't good. matter if you like it or not. When they get that idea of this is what's going to happen, this is what's going to happen, it doesn't matter how much you're over or not over, as Finn Balor, uh, how much you're trying to get over, as Emma and freaking Zack Ryder. If you're not picked, it does not matter. And I think... Jason Jordan's one of those guys that they picked and said, what, well, this is going to work. Yeah, big difference between Chosen and Over. Yeah. And you're right. The Chosen, it doesn't matter. And so I – but it, it, if not a match with Jason Jordan and Triple H, then Jason Jordan and Kurt Angle is the only other match that would make sense, and I don't want to see that either. Yeah, I, I, I agree completely. And uh, not just on not wanting to see it, but in the logic of, well, these are the only few places you can go. I think yeah. you're right. So. And a, 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 a terrible, terrible promo uh, was leading into Survivor Series and then after with Jason Jordan in the ring. Daddy! <laughs> I can do it, Dad! <laughs> don't make me do it, Daddy! You know, my, you know what my dad said about me? Why that? My dad said I couldn't wrestle and then he said I had to. What, what, what? Like, what are you doing, Daddy? My dad. I don't get it, Daddy. <laughs> That's our David San Martino, in case anybody doesn't know we just love to uh go on rants where you talk about my dad why do you have believe what that piece of crap rick, said about my rick, dad rick flair was a piece of crap to my dad rick flair was awful to my dad he didn't polish his boots he didn't call him big bruno like he liked that's not fair wait oh my dad he's my dad it was, yeah. <laughs> go, go, go look up that uh shoot and you'll you'll 
It'll make a lot more sense to you. It'll make sense. Um, you might hate us afterward. Sorry. Uh, even more so than now. <laughs> but yeah, the David San Martino shoot is totally <laughs> worth watching as long as you want to hear people whine about there it is. And then and then be sure to check out the entire Greg Gagne oeuvre. You'll be very you'll be very glad you did. Oh Jesus. Well, it was important to my dad that I not get over because I was his kid. I had to, yeah. I had to earn my spot. It was like those Von Erichs in Texas. They, <laughs> they had to work really hard to get those spots and they do sure that, did. do that much coke. <laughs> it was awesome. It's, it's, it's hard work to, you know, <laughs> drug up that much. It's and, you very know, difficult to do that. Those, still be here. It's hard to <laughs> take that many narcotics in no. the Texas heat. And mm -hmm. oh my God, was the sportatorium hot. Oh my on. goodness gracious, it was 314 <laughs> degrees in that place. Pre-Coke. Yeah. Man, you get drugged out of your mind, man. You ask Terry Bam Bam Gordy, good God almighty. Bam Bam. Bam Bam. That's Bam Bam Bam. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't even know how we got there. <laughs> it gets silly late in the evening. Yeah, I'll wrote, we, it's, yeah. It's been, it's been a heavily turkeyed weekend for me, so yeah. I'm getting about sick of it. So I'm to that point now. And the Thanksgiving leftovers, like, okay, one more plate and I'll be sick of this. I can dig it. I can so, dig it. But then when I get to that point, it's, it gets kind of crazy. So, uh, one of the shows that everybody wanted to see that nobody could see happened Saturday night. We're still trying to get on the internet and just get a rundown of the daggum thing. It was Starcade. Yeah, man. It's... Uh, man, it's, 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 there's a few little video clip, clips that came out today of what happened and you know it looks like a decent time but I just you know hopefully it's a tradition that will start and get bigger and better the more it goes on and hopefully will lead to some good stuff in the future yeah I can get down with that totally yeah. man I'm glad they did it um, I was telling the man that I, I'm, I'm with you I can't find results or anything so I don't know if the Rock and Roll Express Anderson Gallows match happened I hope it did just because it's such a funny and neat idea if it didn't that's okay but I, I was looking forward to that one but I mean it yeah it's cool it's um I, I a lot of AJ Styles people seem to think they have dodged that bullet I don't know why because the main event for Clash of the Champions has been booked so yeah just just keep dodging <laughs> that's what I'm telling you man just stay spry so that's that's the next show coming up is Clash of the Champions as far as I know yeah man okay. they put the official poster out and it's AJ and gender. I would kind of like miss all that stuff because with all the call-ups that came up this past week with all the different groups of ladies, all I've heard is, like, we know it's going to be Women's Royal Rumble this year. It's yeah. going to be Women's Royal Rumble. Yeah, this, so, well, okay, good. They're like, going to need some people. Yeah, but they've, they've still, only... I think it sucks to do it back-to-back -back nights. You know, the same kind of, almost the same version of two different groups coming up back-to-back. -back. Like, this is... Dumb. Yeah, I'm with you. It was, yeah, uh, you know, if you, I mean, I get it. Like, you're right. Call people up, expand the roster, get ready for the Royal Rumble. That's cool. But yeah, it's like, you know, on Tuesday, we're going to pretty much do what they did on do Monday. It <laughs> yeah, it's like, man, that's a great commercial. <laughs> My idea. Just land of opportunity and, you know, <laughs> copy. We're good at that. That's kind of our, that's kind of our deal. That's our bag. That's what we do, man. That's what's up. Daddy said it's okay. My dad said it was okay. They <laughs> copy off my sister. It's okay. So, man, it's just, it's just uh, more of uh, everybody's thinking about the building the card to WrestleMania, and hopefully, it, you know, if this if this Survivor Series was a sign of things to come, and you know, uh, this might be a skippable show, but you know, I've said that before, and it's turned out to be. Not as skippable as I thought yeah. it was going to be. <laughs> that happens to me a lot too, man. There'll be yeah. cards where I'm like, "All right," and oh, I watch Jesus. it. And it's like, "Hey, that was nice." Sometimes you're better off that way because you go in with no expectation at all, and then I don't know. Maybe it, it seems to me if I don't get too keyed up on, okay, this is the one that I really want to see, or these are the two I really want to see, then I'll pay attention to what's in there. Maybe I see something in somebody I've missed before. Yeah. Where if I was like waiting for AJ. I might not be as locked in, so sometimes you get good stuff out of those. You're totally mm -hmm. right, man. Heck yeah. So, but I just think, with, as far as uh, Takeover and Survivor Series last weekend goes, man, it's uh, definitely it's not the show everybody's telling you it was, as far as it being bad. I mean, it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, up until the main event. Yeah, man. 
And that, that's a bummer, but I, 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 it's the same thing we said earlier. I'm totally with you. I'm glad the rest of it was cool, and I, I think it's... I'm glad you can dig the rest of it. Who cares if the... It, I don't know. I, I know that it's, for a lot of people, it's an opportunity to, to complain. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. I love but, that. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, man. But nah, I'm with you. If the rest of it was cool, that's awesome. And I'm not huge on the Survivor Series style match anyway, so that's cool. That the, the other stuff is what would have been cooler anyway. It just is. It feels like one of those uh, nights, especially with this show, is like, well, what is on the line? Nothing's really up for grabs. So it would be nice if the uh, winners of the Survivor Series matches got something other than just bragging rights. Yeah. Oh, we beat Which, up those guys in those other T-shirts. Hey. We did good. Oh, God. Did you like uh, – what's your opinion on the Shield split raw – Red and black shield T-shirt. God awful. I thought they were terrible. God awful. Disgusting. Absolutely heinous. Okay, just checking. Um, <laughs> would it be that hard to print that logo on a full red T-shirt? I mean, why would that? Triple H did it. Yeah. If he can do it. <laughs> Seriously, it's like, <laughs> oh man, that's really cool. What's well, mine? You can't have it. You can't do it. Oh. <laughs> like the idea of him getting super defensive for his T-shirt design. You know, we're cutting yours in half. That's my dear brother. That's right. That's what we're doing. And you got to ruin four t-shirts to do it <laughs> because it wasn't the alternating sides uh so they did uh, again that's terrible i just thought it stunk i did too like as soon as i saw that i'm like yeah. where <laughs> <laughs> oh god it's just it's not look dumb for some reason it does look dumb it's, it's terrible but they'll make awesome action the figures riot gear looks bad enough <laughs> i'm gonna put that on it. i have to do, I, I have to agree i was gonna mm-hmm. say disagree no i have to completely agree man mm-hmm. it's like hey man you know, like the tack vest and the boots. How can we make that worse? <laughs> make it worse. Well, hey, you take this T-shirt, but not all of it. <laughs> Half of two different shirts. Have Three fun, years. guys. This looks terrible, guys. We know it's your music. Go. <laughs> I give it to them right before they're going out. They're, they're calling you. You don't bang, have bang, you don't have time bang, to bang, protest, bang. guys. Go on, what was that? Hotel India. Oh, it's about time. <laughs> It's going to look great. Though. It's going to be great. I don't know that, For real. <laughs> I don't know about that. So, uh, man, you got to go to the Georgia, Georgia Tech game. I now, did go to. Re- review Yeah, that. man. I, I thought about looking at the tickets, and it, it didn't work. The schedule didn't work out where I was going to be able to go in the first place. Yeah. But I was thrilled that I wasn't able to go because of how cold it's been <laughs> uh, this past weekend. I was like, oh, thank God I wasn't down there. Yeah, I would have died. Man. I don't do well with the cold. I don't either, man. And it's like earlier, it seems earlier every year that I really start not liking the cold. Yeah. But, um, I mean, it was a groovy. Tech George is always fun just because of, like, the crowd. It's just it's just a fun celebration of sport in this state. And it was super one-sided, which was a bummer, but it was also kind of expected. But I was telling J-Rad, the thing that I noticed in the stadium I just thought was really interesting is we talk a lot about this kind of stuff because I'm a dork and I like these kind of things. But the philosophy of the spread offense back in the day, particularly uh, when BYU and um, Norm Chow were kind of kind of inventing what we know as the spread now, the logic behind it was that with dropping back to pass protect, it made the necessity to go out and get these huge earth movers that played up front. It gave you a little bit more leeway of guys you could actually dra- draft, recruit to come in and play offensive line. And then the byproduct was that your quarterbacks could be a little bit tinier. You know, you don't have to be 6'4". You don't have to be a bit Dan Marino now. Yeah. You, you know, 5'11", 6'6", six, six, yeah. you're fine. That's yeah. no problem. So all that stuff is real cool. And then through the years, you start to see big-time programs that do get those crazy offensive linemen, and they want to start running it too. And what's cool about it is really what Georgia did, did it really well, man, because they've got really good offensive line players that would work anywhere. But when your primary function is to not even – the function is not even to pass block in that style. It's just that you're dropping the quarterback back, you're putting three and four receivers out there. So we ran the nickel out there all day. When you got the nickel out there, man, those guys can tackle, but they're not linebackers. And so you've got really good offensive linemen at Georgia, and you've got unbelievable tailbacks at Georgia. So when you spread it out, but you still basically have kind of a power run game with one fewer linebacker out there, you can really mm. chew some people up. Yep. And I've seen it before, but just seeing it in person, it was mm-hmm. just the, – the plan was quite good. Georgia's very, very good, and their game plan, is, or particularly their offensive game plan, was just mm-hmm. on. 31-7 yeah. was very – 
31, excuse me, 38 7 was uh, very, very accurate. I mean, it's, and I hate it because obviously I would like to have shown up and played a little bit better, but they're, Georgia's just better than we are. And it's the, ath- athletically, obviously, but the game plan and the execution, it was like, yeah, these these mm-hmm. cats are playing pretty dumb. This is pretty impressive, man. It's just interesting to see the old school philosophy mixed with the old school talent, and then this is the product you get on days that it really works. It's like, man, you just got to take your hat off to this. It was yeah. it was cool. It was fun. It was a nice day, and we sit way up high. And usually for the Georgia game, we're surrounded by Georgia fans. But I was telling Jared, the upside is where we sit. People in those seats, man, they're they're only in those seats because they really want to be there. Oh, so yeah. we had good. There's a, con- a constant like breeze going through uh, uh, that stadium. That it's like, man, just it's especially on top of it being cold. You have that like it's just like inescapable. It's like. Bobby Dodd, why did you do this to me? Yeah, man, yeah, the, the spot. I love to sit up there, man, but it's the Dodd, honest to goodness, has about 20,000 more seats than it needs. And that's just because we've talked about that with SunTrust and just my philosophy in general. I'm a huge fan of AT&T in San Francisco because it's smaller than it should be. That's why there's never any tickets. Mm -hmm. It's way Mm -hmm. better to book the hall you know you can always sell out than to just have this cavern with nobody there. And a lot of times at Tech, unfortunately, that happens to us. Mm -hmm. It's like 55,000, which is obviously not that huge of a college stadium, but for that school and for that team, it's big. Considering where it's at. Yeah, that's that's a huge huge stadium for them. It's just, I think, the reason 55K doesn't sound like that many is because it is SEC country and there are cathedrals down here. So I, I get that by comparison it's not all that, but it's like it's a big stadium for them. At the same time, I do like where I sit. It's kind of fun, man. But it was cool. I do. I hate that we're going to stay at home bowl season, and there's been a lot of belly aching about, well, if I hadn't cast that Central Florida game, well, Central Florida might have beat our butts. It might not have mattered a bit. Those guys can play a little bit, man. As, as well as they played in as close games as they played, it, it did kind of stink that that's you know uh, Sorry. not going to happen for them. Yeah, that's what bummed me that's, out, too. That's, that's the tough one. It's yeah, like, that, dang. That's what bummed me out, too, because, like, um, the two teams that really got us this year, really just lined up and beat us, mm-hmm. are Clemson and Georgia. They're both going to the playoff. Mm-hmm. And the rest of the game's like, man, it's one play here. It's one converted third down mm-hmm. there, and it's like, ah, oh, yeah. man, it's very frustrating to get that close and then just that gummit, yeah. you know. And also, I really am bummed that uh, I'm not bummed that Miami got beat. I just hate that we got so close and then it wasn't us that did it. I'm like, yeah. ah, yeah. if it wasn't gonna be us, that I wanted worthwhile. Yeah, if I was, yeah. if it was, if they were gonna get beat, I wanted it to be us, man. It's when being a Georgia fan and watching what happened to Miami. Like, see, see that smart Rick team right we there. We knew it. We and knew it was like, coming. Ah, this, this feels like home. Yeah, but we talked about that. Actually, I was discussing that with a buddy of mine beforehand that uh, I think that's the Big East curse because they used to do that to them all the time. They would send them either up to Pittsburgh or to Chestnut Hill to play mm-hmm. Boston College in November, and it's like uh, – <laughs> and, and people get mad when you say that. A lot of my, my, my SEC guy doesn't care it doesn't bother him but some of the SEC people get really mad when you point out that it does matter region and where you are playing the game matters and I'll give you an example we'll just do that hypothetical thing because uh I know there's tons of people that love the idea of going to eight teams for the playoff there's tons of people that hate the idea of going to eight teams for the playoff but I, and it's weird too because most people that hate the idea of eight it seems that their approach to it is just man a field of eight that's stupid that's way too many well and I get that, and that's totally cool. If you're just trying to like skim the cream off the top and you want to get down to it and get done with this thing, yeah. I get that. I want it to be eight teams because I think conference championships meaning something would be really cool. And also, you have that enormous gap that starts next weekend up till January 1st. Yeah. Go to eight teams and play some dead gum games, man. That freaking two and a half week layoff is mm-hmm. the dumbest thing in all of sports that's, that's besides, besides the college football playoff. Yeah. <laughs> and the two dumbest things in sport right there together. Mm-hmm. But I love the idea of conference champions doing their thing. And so here is my point. Um, we discussed this too. Auburn beating Alabama is not a surprise at all mm-hmm. because, let's be blunt, if you know, if you think that it's as politically involved as I do, I'm a huge believer that the networks orchestrate this stuff. If Alabama beats Auburn and then Georgia beats Alabama – Georgia goes to the playoff. Mm -hmm. If Alabama beats Auburn and then uh, Alabama wins the SEC championship game, Alabama goes to the playoff. 
But if Alabama loses and then Georgia and Auburn play each other, the winner of that game and one loss Alabama both go to the playoffs. Yeah, it's work out it's going to happen, and that's the point is getting two teams in there is a way bigger deal than getting one. Yeah. So that's something frustrating. If it's eight teams, however, and you're Alabama, even if you're the top seed, number six, that did not win your conference, six is a road game. It just is. You're going to number three. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, who would that potentially be? Let's just spitball who the potential conference champions could be. Clemson, they're going to be number one if they're a, cha if they're a champ. Okay. Your other choices are Oklahoma, Texas Christian. They are Wisconsin or Ohio State. Uh, I think I'm um, – Pac the Pac-12 is a little bit different because the Pac-12 is going to be USC or Stanford. And if you get to go to one of them, great. But USC and Stanford, whoever wins that one is going to be the five seed. They're going to be on the road anyway, so you don't get the Pac-12 option. Mm -hmm. Going back, again, six gets you three. That's If I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, one and eight, two and seven, six and three, sorry. So if they're the top seed, you still got to go on the road. The best you could hope for, the best that you could hope for in that situation probably is TCU. Yeah. Because if you have to go to Big Ten country, you're in trouble. I know Alabama fans don't want to hear that, but it is real. All you have to do is look at the Miami Dolphins playoff history. You'll see that I'm right. Mm -hmm. I appreciate Alabama's a good football team, but you take them up to Madison and need them to plow through the snow, you'll see why they play that style they play. Mm -hmm. And there's absolutely no way you're going to Columbus and getting that win. So yeah. it's a good thing that you don't have to do it that way because you, you know, the road game would just kill you. But the other thing, the other positive and interesting one, is Texas Christian. TCU is the last team anybody wants to play. There is a reason they have consistently and always been left out of the playoff. And it's very frustrating. It's just like, they're better than that. Anyhow, yeah. none of that stuff matters because it's four, team and four teams and not eight teams. And it really, I have never seen a down of, a college, of the college football playoff series. I love college football up until next weekend. And then yeah. after that, I like bowl games where you have like, small yeah. conference champions playing each other yeah. but the playoff is useless it, it, it worked out uh, for Georgia because either way we were going to get a rematch Yeah, uh, with Auburn being the more recent uh, loss and then Alabama for the last time we were in the title game we kind of owe them once so we're, either way it was going to be uh, a rematch for us but it, I just I feel like road dog cutting the promo with Billy Gunn back in the day when they asked, like, how do you feel about your chances? I'm like, I'm terrified. I'm scared. <laughs> I can dig it. I but, can dig it. But, I, you know, I think it's going to be awesome regardless of what happens. So I'm just going into it uh, looking for a good game. Uh, it's going to be and, interesting. And we have to win because the Georgia Dome's blown up. That was our curse. That was the worst thing that ever happened so that's gone the martyr bus rolled over it it sure did and it, everything's going to be fine yeah i think um i think george auburn's going to be a lot of fun there is a, uh, I mean the one seed doesn't really matter because they're not seeds you don't get a home game if you did that'd be cool yeah but it's fascinating the idea of thinking that you've got georgia who lost to auburn and has a chance to avenge that loss and then clemson who beat Auburn, and it's just, it's kind of cool, but my only frustration is if Georgia gets in, I hope they win it, simply because I am sick to death of Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State. Yeah. Every single stinking year is this same stuff, old. and I hope to God Wisconsin wins the Big Ten, mm -hmm. just for some new blood. That's if they even put them in. I don't know if they will or not, simply because it's a little tricky, only because Oklahoma's got the bigger football history, and also, how many years can you let the Big 12 just flap. I mean, yeah. it's they get left out every year. And now that you've finally got one of your sexy name teams up there, if it's Ohio State and Michigan or Texas and Oklahoma, you really have a choice to make. And I, that's what I don't like about it, man, is they really do just pick who looks sexiest in the window. Yeah. And it's very frustrating because Wisconsin is one of the more consistent programs in the country all the time. TCU's been good like this for a long time, and they're never going to get that shot. And, it's just really why I wish they would just contract, take like the top 20, 25, whatever, you know, 20, however you want to do it. Yeah. I would probably do 25, 20, 24, 24 or 26 teams, mm -hmm. split them in half, 
play 12 games, which is everybody in your league basically, and then take the top four from there. And then what happens is the bottom four teams in that league and the top four from the division under you switch places every year. The promotion relegation thing from soccer, which God forbid you mention soccer in conjunction with football, but it would be a hell of a lot more exciting than this crap they have now. Because yeah. now it's just ch chickens pecking each other's eyes out. And really, it's the same thing every year anyway. Because I guess my biggest problem is well, Alabama's got that loss now. Should they should they be back in the college football playoff? Well, wasn't nobody screaming that for Georgia when Auburn beat them. And it's like, you yeah. know they can play their way back in, especially if Auburn beats Alabama, then they get the rematch. And, well, mm -hmm. you know, ain't nobody going to beat Alabama. It's like, you, need to pay, you need to pay attention. Keep watching, <laughs> idiot. God, people just – I don't know why. They haven't played nobody all year. They they've played. Alabama has played one good team all season, and they just lost to them yesterday. Yeah. That's it. That's exactly yep. what they've done, man. Yep. But it's very frustrating to me that there's so much crossover between the well, I don't listen to the media and I don't trust the media, and those same people will regurgitate anything ESPN tells you. Well, mm -hmm. Alabama's number one. They haven't got beat. Does that mean they're never going to lose again? Yeah. Come on. But yeah, it's it was cool. Like this weekend was fun, man. The um, uh, Pittsburgh Miami. I felt bad for Miami, but I that one felt right. Yeah. And um, the brain bowl between Stanford and Notre Dame felt right. Stanford is amazing. What I don't know how in the world they're doing what they're doing, especially as consistently as they're doing it. But I mean, it's like I, that's really impressive. Uh, it's just unbelievable to, to have one season like that. And this is like I mean, this goes back to when Jim Harbaugh was there. Mm. I'm like, God, this is gonna be good forever, aren't it? Have it. It's pretty cool. It's pretty amazing, yeah. man. Yeah. So I kind of, not that it matters for the playoff or anything, but I kind of hope Stanford beats USC. And um, I really would love to see a bowl game matchup between. I'm just on these teams right now, but I'd like to see Stanford and TCU play each other. I'd, I'd really be interested in that because TCU is going to be like Central Florida, like South Florida will do this too, man. They're going to wind up getting somebody in bowl season and just mm -hmm. rough them up. Yeah. Be like, what the heck is up with these guys, man? Because their record doesn't really indicate how good they. Oh, uh, South Florida's nine and two. It's not like they got a bad record, mm -hmm. but they're nine and two, including that what four point loss to undefeated. Center. That was a great game. That was my favorite mm -hmm. game of the weekend. Obviously, because the Tech Georgia game was like getting punched in the face for you know yeah. about forty five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like that Marta bus backing over my face for three hours. <laughs> but um. Who watches the Weather Channel for that anyway? Yeah, why is that guy so upset? Right. It's like, man, you're famous Ain't nobody now. Nobody watching the Weather Channel for to see the Georgia Dome get blown up. Yeah, I, see, I, don't, I don't know why they hired Bill O'Reilly to do his current affair on the Weather Channel. <laughs> we'll do it live! Move that bus! We'll do it live! <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's it's cool, man. We've reached another. I just. I'm, I'm curious to see how many years college football thinks they can keep doing the same old crap. Because, you know, it's, again, same old thing where. Well, Auburn's got two losses. Yeah, but they're finishing up with Georgia and Alabama. Boy, they still got those two losses, but keep your eyes on Ohio State. They might be moving up. And that's that's like, quote. That is a quote. And it's yeah. like, first of all, Ohio State does not have two losses. Ohio State has two grenades that went off in their face. They got yeah. blown up not once but twice. Mm -hmm. One time on their field by Oklahoma, and the other time by Iowa which I love because that's my favorite team yeah. in the Big Ten. And Iowa just absolutely took a crap on Brutus Buckeye's face. They, they did. <laughs> exactly, man. So like, why am I still hearing about this jump? Because for me, it's clear for me, for me. It's clear cut. If Wisconsin doesn't win the Big Ten, that's the one that's out. Mm -hmm. Well, the Pac-12's got that. I don't care. Mm -hmm. USC's better than Ohio State, and Stanford's better than both of them. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear that mess. But that's the other cute thing now. It's like, well, if Ohio State beats Wisconsin – then it should be Alabama and Georgia and Auburn. And I'm like, you're not getting all three of them in there. That's yeah. not that's not going to work. Because, well, Get that mess. if Auburn wins the SEC championship, then Georgia will have two losses and they'll have two losses. And Alabama will only have the one. You're getting Alabama and the mm -hmm. winner in Atlanta, and that's it. Yeah. And I, I do think that's going to be Georgia. I just think, I think it's going to be Georgia, and I hope it's Georgia. And honest to God, if they make the playoff, I hope y'all win it. I really, I mean, genuinely that's... hope you win it because anybody that has I'd been... be satisfied with just winning Saturday. That's to me. That's it's the one that matters. The championship, absolutely. And but anything beyond that, man, gravy. That's just 
It does ta not take much of that gravy to get all over my plate. I'm with you. It's just gravy on top of that big old piece of cheesecake that I got. <laughs> yes, I like cheesecake with gravy on it because I'm disgusting, but that's what I like. I am totally with you on Saturday being the one because mm -hmm. the SEC championship, first of all, it's been given out forever. And secondly, I don't like to even think about it. It's the one, baby. That is the one. We waited mm -hmm. our whole lives to see. That's why it made mm -hmm. me so mad that, I mean, Mark Richt finally gets his due now. Yeah. Not. Not from everybody. There's some people that liked Rick the whole time. But yeah. Mark Rick walks in and wins the first SEC title in Georgia in 20 years, and people acted like it was no big deal. And I'm like, y'all mm -hmm. suck, man. If it, if it was predetermined that we were never going to win again, then by all means, I want Mark Rick to be the coach. But considering that's not the fact, and that it was just time for everybody to move on. They, oh, things yeah. worked out better for him. Things are working out better for us. Oh, absolutely. So everybody's, uh, you know, grand working out. I think so. everybody's grand, man. And it's one of those neat things heck, where. Heck of a guy. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and over the next five seasons, that really could be a very fun potential playoff doodad mm -hmm. because we've talked about this for years and this will segue into our next college football thing and then I'll wrap it up. <sighs> The Southeastern Conference's Eastern Division has three, depending on who you ask and how long they've been following the sport, three marquee programs. You ask this guy, they've got two. And right now it's proven that I'm correct, and this one's going away too. The three are the University of Florida, which I think is completely overrated, and all of its history began in 1996, and I'll tell you why they were able to win then. Mm -hmm. Tennessee, which is the reason they've been picking on Nebraska so much. Well, Nebraska's never going to be relevant again. It's because you know Knoxville already isn't. And Athens. Mm -hmm. That is the big dog in the SEC East. And Mark Richt made them that. Kirby Smart is the blasting cat to put you over the top and really yeah. make you that Eastern contender year after year. I believed it when they hired him, and I, I can't, I'm can't. surprised it came this quickly. Or not this quickly. The success is very, very cool, but they really have rough people up. Yeah. That part of it is like, <laughs> God dang, they got there and with a plum, man. Uh, a plum, I said it wrong. The thing about plums. a plum, I can feel it. Plums. Plum running down my, the juice running down my chin. <laughs> the problem that Tennessee has is they got great history. Tennessee's got awesome history. But the state yeah. does not produce high school talent the way Georgia does. And the problem that you run into is you have to be able to recruit Ohio and Florida and Georgia. Well, Mark Rick locked you out of Georgia a long time ago. Kirby Smart ain't opening the door. Mm -hmm. Florida you're not going to get into for the same problem that Florida's got, and we'll get there in a second. And then Ohio, Jim Trestle made it his number one mission in life to lock up Ohio kids, and they're mm -hmm. still there. So that is when Tennessee started to fall. Oh, well, they shouldn't have got rid of Phil Fulmer for going five and seven. Well, they didn't get rid of him for going five and seven. They went. They got rid of him for having bad year and bad year and bad year. Yeah, that's what happened. And Fulmer would be in the exact same boat right now as anybody else up there, man, because the people within the coaching profession figured this out a heck of a lot earlier than fans, whether they can admit it or not, or ESPN, who won't admit it. Knoxville is not a marquee. You don't want to go there. That's a very yeah. different – we've talked about it before, man. All the SEC f coaches do now is polish Nick Saban's ring. and ain't nobody mm -hmm. feeling that. It's like expecting – because of ESPN's shove job of the American League East, it's like expecting every manager in baseball to want one of those jobs. Why would they? No. If St. Louis opens up, if San Francisco opens up, of course you're going to take those jobs. That's mm -hmm. what you're going to do. And the reason Chip Kelly turned down Florida mm -hmm. is because – Florida is almost as in a bad a spot as Tennessee is. At least Tennessee had their glory, and now they've kind of dried up. Florida, I've said it before, and I just revel in saying it again. The University of Florida has never succeeded ever at a time when Florida State or Miami or both were not on probation. Florida State and Miami are in the ACC, which now is as protected by ESPN as the SEC is. I know it's the SEC school. They're third. Far and away. It's the reason that people look at that job being open and they're like, oh, that's okay. No thanks. That's all right. Scott <laughs> Frost point blank said, you know what? I, you don't even need what? to send you don't even need to send your people to talk to my people. Don't worry about it, guys. It. And he's going to Lincoln anyway. We talked about that yeah. a while back. I think he's gonna take that Nebraska job anyway, but good on him for not pulling a chip Kelly, because the only reason mm -hmm. Kelly talked to Florida is to run the price up in Los Angeles. Yeah. But the fact that, that, that got announced today. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like, man, they are just digging and digging and digging and digging. And I think Dan Mullen is a very good coach, but Dan Mullen, we talked about this before as well, man. Dan Mullen is an offense first guy, which is totally okay, but you just have to get the defensive coordinator correct. Yeah. Uh, the defensive coordinator correct. I said correct because I was going to say so, correct and right. Like an okay coach, but a better coordinator. 
It could be what's going on, man. And a lot of the defense for him is like, well, he's in the SEC West. It's brutal. And they're right. And I think that's a good point. I just think that, you know, his success at Florida is going to depend on who the D.C. is. It's, that's just the way it is in the SEC. you got to get those guys right. So Tennessee announced their coach. Florida announced their coach. And it's like neither one of those are the guys you were after, were they? And on the same side, we talked about Chip Kelly talking to Florida to run his price up. He point blank said, don't bother Tennessee. He told Tennessee yeah. not to bother. And it's yeah. like they are really in a rough spot there. They really yeah. are. It's bad. Yeah, man. And it's like I appreciate oh, the SEC. It's the SEC. It's the SEC. You know, SEC. There's Tuscaloosa and there's everybody else. Yeah. You're not going to get marquee people in there. You'll have a bunch of young dudes trying to carve out their name. But it's not as glorious as you think it is. The Big Ten and the Pac-12 are where the money are. And also – you don't have to put up with these psychotic fan bases that the SEC schools have. Mm -hmm. With this, basically, you got 18 months to win us three national titles, or you're gone. Yeah, you don't have to put up with that junk. Mm -hmm. like, eh, I know, what, I know where I'd rather go. Oh yeah, but yeah, man, I think the uh, the coaching carousel is interesting. Uh, there's still a lot of people. The jury is still out on Paul for a lot of people. I think Johnson is good simply because of how much his buyout is. Yeah. Um, it's I, the same deal. I mean, what are you gonna get? I, well, I know who I want. The guy that I want is still on the board for no reason whatsoever. If mm -hmm. you are Tennessee, if you are Florida, did you lose Charlie Strong's phone number? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is the reason it drives me nuts. Well, Charlie Strong was a terrible at Texas. ESPN is on the air suggesting that Tennessee go hire Lane Kiffin back. Now, if you think what Charlie Strong did at Texas <laughs> is comparable to what Lane stupid. Kiffin did at stupid. USC, you're nuts. And don't get me wrong. That was not Tennessee. I don't. I don't know a you, single Tennessee. I, I, I said you. You would want Charlie Strong at Georgia Tech. Yes. Okay. Oh yes. Just, if, if, if you told me I could have any coach, there's two guys that if you're telling me that we're going to get rid of Paul Johnson, mm -hmm. and I hate to sound like I'm pushing that, but to be blunt with you, if they did it, it would be great because he'd go back to Statesboro, and yeah. I would love that for him. And that'd, that'd work. Out. It'd be great because they they love him and they appreciate him, and mm -hmm. we don't, and it mm -hmm. frustrates me. But the two guys that I would most talk love about, to see. Talk about history. Oh my God, he oh. he is their yeah. history, man. Yeah. I mean, he's built the offense for Irk, and man, that's the, that's awesome. Yeah. There's the two guys that I would most love to see take the job at Tech. Well, yeah, he could rebuild the whole system because the, yeah, and I'm talking about uh, I'm talking about a system, stanky old system. Oh. I'm talking about, and I love Paul. Mm -hmm. If it sounds like I'm dissing him, I, I really don't mean it that way because I love the guy. But people keep going on and on about we got to be competitive every year, year in year out, la di da. And they're big example of how like. Well, I don't want to hear about the academics because Stanford and Notre Dame. All right, David Brain, when he left Georgia Tech, basically said this is a school where you can recruit players and you can bring in players, but about every three or four years you're going to have a nine, ten win season, have a real good one. So about once every recruiting class, wow, that's just not acceptable. Okay, so then your examples of why Tech should do better regardless of academics are Stanford, who is very good every year, mm -hmm. and Notre Dame, who's good about once every four years. Yeah. Just think your examples through. Yeah. This was my, I told the man I called the station last night, got to discuss what's going on at Tech. And my point was simply this. I, again, I love Paul Johnson, but if we're, if we're talking about recruiting, the problem with recruiting at Georgia Tech is not the academics. It's not. The problem with recruiting at Georgia Tech is, well, you got to get those trench guys. Offensive and defensive linemen, that's what matters. That absolutely is what matters. But you are not going to get those gigantic earth movers to play in an offense where no NFL scout can see them pass block. Yeah. It won't work. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with the guys in the defensive trench. You can't go to that place and practice against an offense that you're never. You're not going to learn anything that's going to help you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If you're practicing yeah. against that offense, not only will it not help you on Sundays, which mm -hmm. let's be honest, when it comes to recruiting, that is the number one thing is who's going to make me a pro. Mm -hmm. You can't learn anything that's going to help you against your next opponent, much less your NFL opponents. And I didn't use this example last night, but I'll use it now. So we just, when was the last time Georgia Tech had a coach you got anybody excited about watching Tech football? Like it's never happened. Well, the answer is George O'Leary. O'Leary's teams I were good. George O'Leary had some amazing teams at Georgia Tech. He, he's a guy that I never really understood. What, what was the travesty and crime of having something on your resume that wasn't accurate. I mean, why does that end a career? 
Well, it only ended his career at Notre Dame simply because it's the same thing that's going to happen. It's, we're reliving history right now with uh, Greg Schiano getting that job at Tennessee mm -hmm. because shiano has got roots at Penn State. And he knew what was going on, and Tennessee has values, and you got to get him out of here. Mm -hmm. And they're going to fire him, but they're going to fire him in the same manner that Notre Dame did O'Leary because basically what happened is George O'Leary went to meet the bo boosters, and he's a fat old dude with white hair, and he wasn't sexy. That's literally what happened, and they drummed up this bull. It's the same yeah. thing that happened with Trestle, like getting fired over, oh, the kids got free tattoos. Ohio oh. State wanted rid of him, absolutely. Yeah. Ohio State knew they had Urban Meyer on the hook, and they yeah. wanted to reel him in. How much is a tattoo? We'll pay him. Well, the thing that's funky about that is you still yeah. see kids with ink all the oh, time oh, and some of that down. stuff is elaborate a lot of those guys have like portraits Very those expensive. those things ain't cheap and so Very it's just expensive. like okay but Tress gets run out of town and it wouldn't bother me just don't act like we're stupid yeah. I, I know what happened Trestle was this not not just Trestle wasn't as sexy as Meyer you know yeah. you get Urban Meyer you wanted him just say so I, but, but, that, but that's the point we're trying to make is man uh Tech football was awesome when O'Leary was there. O'Leary had a couple of teams yeah. that were like slamming good. Like, but that, that was the spot for him, and Notre Dame was the dream job. Yeah, it's Angel O'Leary. That it's kind of like, uh, good news is you got the dream job. Bad news is you got the dream job. Yeah, that. And that he kind of realized, like, man, this is – this was never going to happen. Why, why did it ever leave? That was always my thing with Georgie, too, man, is that uh, his name's O'Leary for Pete's sake. Yeah, Notre, Dame that offered, that Notre Dame offers him a job. I can't get mad at him for leaving. It's a totally yeah. okay. Um, and and it, the thing, It was getting to be time to go, but I didn't think it was quite time to go yet. But when, when that job comes open, like, that's guys, I have, I have to go. Yeah, the fascinating thing about it is I genuinely think if it wasn't Notre Dame, he never would have left. Mm -hmm. I really think that he was happy in Atlanta because the thing that people don't sometimes don't remember about O'Leary is that when you go back to Bobby Ross in 1990 when they killed everybody, he was the D.C. for that team. He had yeah. real good roots in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and we loved him, and he had some really good teams, but he takes the Notre Dame job, and then we hire Chan Gailey. And Gailey is a, is a fine example, especially juxtaposing those two. Because as far as some the, rough years, the I, well, that's the strange thing, and it's what drives me so crazy. We got to get someone in here that can recruit better. We got to get the four and five star recruits. First things first, you got Calvin Johnson because he's a genius. Mm -hmm. That's why he got in. But also, Chan Gailey was incredible at recruiting. He mm -hmm. got tons of guys. He got he, he got a lot of people to the next level. Yes, he did, and that's, that's the thing. Well, that's what he could do. And that's the thing that's interesting. It goes back to what we were talking about about how you get those recruits to begin with. Chan had NFL roots. He mm -hmm. knew the guys knew if they came yeah. and learned from him that they get, get they get jobs. Absolutely. So it's totally what we're talking about, man. And they're both defensive first guys. Actually, I think Gailey was an offense guy, mm -hmm. but at the same time. That's what matters, man. The NFL, if, if that's what you want to do, if you really want one of those programs, you just need, and I'm not saying hire an NFL guy for the love of God. I think that's terrible. But uh, at the time, that was the trend. Well, that if you have if you have to replace yeah. George, I agree. It's yeah. like, you know, George has left. you got to do what you can do. It's all good. I love Johnson. I like that system for Georgia Tech. But if you switch it up, switch it up. Switch it up. That's cool, and I'm totally good with it. Basically, what I mean by switch it up is build defense first. Go defense yeah. first. And so, finally, I'm sorry, I'll finally get back to finish your, the question. I love Charlie Strong. I can't wait to see Charlie get another Big Five opportunity. But if not him, I cannot believe that Brett Venables is still – I mean, obviously he's going to be the D.C. at Clemson until the end of the season. But I can't believe more of these teams aren't holding out and waiting. I appreciate Tennessee and Florida fired their coaches early because they thought they were going to get John Gruden and they both thought – they thought Chip Kelly was magically going to be cloned and they'd both get to hire him. Yeah. And now neither one of them gets to hire him. I cannot believe that name hasn't come up more often, man. And So those would be the two guys I'd most like to see at Tech. But particularly Charlie, only because – it's not that I think he'd do a better job than Venerables. I just love him. Char Charlie's just my guy. I'm biased as crap, so that's that's the guy I would love to see at Tech. Cool. I don't think it's going to happen, but I still like it. It's nice to think about. I still like it. Yeah, it's still, yeah. still cool. But, yeah, um, going back to Gailey for a moment, absolutely. Calvin Johnson, um, Bebe Thomas is his. And Bebe played for Paul, but he was recruited by Gailey. Um, Nesbitt made the next level. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Dwyer, Derek Morgan, um, Morgan Burnett. Um, lots of good talent. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he put um, – one of his prospects in the WWE Universal title picture. Hey, back right here. Yeah, he was. He was one of. Uh, he was Roman. Was one of Gailey's too, man. Yeah, it, it, it was cool. It's cool, man.
That's, that's what's up. Yeah, man, that's that good stuff. Man. We will see you guys in the next on one. On the next show. On the radio.